All right, cadets, welcome to another episode of General Howitzer's Big Monster Briefing Room. Uh, a very interesting show today. Uh, we're going to do one of the, uh, probably one of the most famous Toho Kaiju films, training films, uh, that's not Godzilla. All right. Uh, and, although the guy that played Godzilla, who's in the suit, is the green uh, gargantuan in this. It's called War of the Gargantuas. Uh, the War of the Gargantuas. I, I did that with Return of the Living Dead last week, too. I was just saying Return of the Living Dead, and it's the Return of the Living Dead. Uh, you know, you got to be careful. The purists will get all over you about that stuff. Um, so there's a the in there. Uh, this film was uh, was shot in 65, released in 66, uh, and released in America in 1970. Took them a long time to get it, uh, uh, you know, rebooted with uh, 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 English voices and... Uh, uh, dubbing and uh, and get it to America, but uh, it is a very interesting um, kaiju film for for many reasons. One, uh, the the monsters in this are very human like. They're they're humanoid creatures. They look very human like. They're they're kind of like Bigfoots. <laughs> it's the war of the Bigfoots. The green Bigfoot against the 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 you know sandy colored Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and their names in there, there she is I, I, well There's you know i sister. just because i'm a scientist you know i had to correct this because i'm very much into zoology and cryptozoology you know and uh, I wanted to say, you know, there's Yeti, which is the white one. He's white and furry. He lives in the Himalayas. Then we have Bigfoot, who is well, more. And then he's we not have really Sas white. He's a brown. He's brown. Well, he. Uh, well, but it's a Yeti, white brown. It's a it's, it's a sandy Yeti, colored brown. Yeti is more. Well, it just depends on you know where he lives because if he's in Asia, he's going to be sometimes white. But there is also abominable snowman. I don't know if you've heard of abominable snowman, but there's well, that you know, one they kind of allude to that because he's up in the mountains, the brown one. But uh, uh, again, yes, Gregory and Gannon, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. He says there's no shortage of folks correcting folks in the nerd universe. Yeah, that's what I'm. Doing <laughs> I wouldn't right go to the now. nerd universe, but yeah. You, you, they well, do that's what I'm you. doing right now because we also have Sasquatch, you know, and we also have Swamp Ape. That's well, another one who lives in Miami, and he likes to hang ape. out in Miami. Skunk yes. ape. He smells really stink. You got to go like this if you go anywhere yes. in Miami. He's really stinkified. You know, he's not a fun guy to be around. And there's a lot of them, but the abominable snowman, I think it tells you everything you need to know about him. He's abominable, which means he's <laughs> like not a good yeah. person. Every, every time you say abominable snowman, I'm thinking of that old cartoon with Bugs Bunny. Ooh, a bunny rabbit. <laughs> I will hug him and pet him and call him George. Uh, <laughs> cool. and and you know you it, it just that, pops in there. I can't I can't get it out of my head once once I once you say abominable snowman, abominable snowman. And by the way, of course your fans, I mean cadets, are asking about the peach tea. Are you prepared, General? He's prepared. Can you see it? I can. Peach see tea it. makes everything better. Just make sure that you make your noises. We've been waiting for for the noises. <laughs> Fred Bowman is here. Thank God. We need Fred Bowman. I need Fred Bowman in my life. Um, Some people are only here for the Fred Bowman you know, comments. Uh, oh, oh! I have an announcement to make. I will not be appearing at G Fest next week uh, because of personal reasons. Um, I'm going to have to cancel my trip to Chicago, unfortunately. And uh, I was really looking forward to it, but uh, I just I have to take care of things here at home first. Um, that comes first. So uh, I, I can't more elaborate any more than that. But uh, uh, it's 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 sad. But uh, I, I won't get to see. I won't. I won't get to G Fest this year. You won't get so, to G Fest, but you will be making the peach toy, the peach tea noises. I will. I will be making the peach tea noises for sure. Which is the most important thing that that, that we <laughs> want to hear. And you'll so, and you'll be there next year for sure. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I will pet him and squeeze him. Yes. <laughs> but And there's also the abominable snowman who makes snow cones in uh, in the Pixar films. Hey, you guys, uh, you guys want any snow cones? <laughs> so that's another. I do. I do several impressions of different abominable snowmen. Uh, by the way, one of the one of these days we're going to do the movie Abominable, which is a really good Bigfoot movie. Uh, and they look like Jack Elam. <laughs> and that's all I'm saying. Uh, but they're pretty gnarly creatures. Uh, in that movie. So we're going to have to do some Bigfoot movies. I got to find a Bigfoot expert. So maybe, maybe, maybe Jake, Jake Allen will be my Bigfoot. Expert. I, I think, I think, he lives out talk, in the woods, yeah. right? I think if you talk to Renee Jaworski, she's actually a really huge Bigfoot fanatic. She knows everything there is to know about him. So, I mean, you might want to reach out to her. She, well, and, although, and you know a lot about Bigfoot, obviously you just know went through a big diatribe there, uh, you know, talking about the skunk ape and everything. 
<laughs> yes, of course, General. Yeah. And I'm glad you got your voice back, by the way. And I'm glad you got your camera back. Yes, definitely. That's good. That's a good now, thing. Now, we're getting through your comments. There's a lot of comments today. So I'm trying to scroll through them, General, if you can see. Isn't a Yeti in the same family? Well, um, abominable snowmen, so that's that's the name for them in, in that region. The, they call them the Yeti. Uh, and their cousins, yeah, you know, Harry and the Hendersons. That would be an interesting uh, tra training film now, wouldn't it? Little John Lithgow action. Um, I've never heard <laughs> anyone say a little John Lithgow action. I think that's the first time I've ever heard that. <laughs> I think it's a first. I think you're right. I think it is a first. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Madeline, hey, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are going to talk about the, the War of the Gargantuous. Uh, today and uh, oh, you know what? I forgot to pull out, pull down the little guys from up there. Are they up there on the second shelf? Darn it! <laughs> I, I I don't want to stand up because I'm I'm afraid you'll see my shorts. <laughs> I want you to see my shorts. Uh, take the camera off me for a second, and you okay. you handle this for just one second, okay? okay? okay. While I'll I go grab the them because I've got it. I've got the uh, the action figures here. Okay, that's all right. Julio said uh, used to love that one. I think you talk about Harry and the H Hendersons. Uh, I used to love that one too, but it's a little scary, you know. Uh, Harry, the 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 Bigfoot in that one is like kind of freaky, to be honest with you. Um, General Julio is asking if you've ever seen The Geek. It's a Bigfoot film and not Facebook friendly in the slightest. The Geek can't say that I have. I'll have to check it out. I'll have to look. I'll have to look for it. So, in any case, uh, I'll save those for later. Um, we start out with our timeline. Uh, there's a ship moving through uh, slightly choppy waters at night. That's how the film begins. There it is. The pilot looks sensible enough, uh, though he looks a little tense. There he is. Now, this guy's been in a lot of these training films from Toho. Usually he plays small parts, sometimes military parts. Uh, the problem here, there's a giant octopus. Uh, this is very common in Japanese waters. Is giant this called octopus. a kraken? Is this one of the krakens? Uh, you know, some people would probably call it a kraken because that's a mythical creature that supposedly lives in the ocean. It's just kind of a sea monster. Um, so, yeah, some might call it that. A lot of the cadets... Very good. A lot of the cadets are wanting to know details about your shorts and about your pants. So I don't know what you feel comfortable <laughs> sharing, General. Come on. Interest, We're broadcasting okay. from our homes for crying out loud. But is it, mili is it military so, yes. grade? Is Sandals and shorts. <laughs> okay. But is if, it I, if I had gone to G-Fest and, and I bought even a bag to put over my shoulder to put to put the stickers in, uh, I would be wearing pants. Okay. But uh, yeah, we're, we're at home. So <laughs> the Big Monster Briefing Institute, that's far away. We're, we're, we're broadcasting from home because it's, let's face it, there's a pandemic out there still. Um, uh, here he is. Hey, you guys. That's his best line. That's his best line. Kraken, not even once. Uh, Fred wants <laughs> to know if, if, if Mount Shatiro is in this one. Mount Shatiro. I don't believe so. That was a Gamera thing, right? Yeah. So, hey, you guys. And then the tentacles, they, they go away. They just slip away for no apparent reason. What could that be? So the skipper looks out uh, and shiver me timbers. It's a green giant. And he's not so jolly. And, and for the record, this is, this is a pretty gnarly, horrifying looking creature face. <laughs> you know, kaiju face. Uh, but again, this is the guy that's playing this character is the guy that plays the Godzilla in most of the early Godzilla films. Uh, and, then, and his movements in this movie are, are incredible. I mean, he's really, really good at uh, it's monster movement uh, in, these, in these kind of films. Um, so anyway, that's a, that's a face that only a mother could love. Um, I'm a little concerned about uh, what's, you know, there's, there's something in that shot that doesn't look right. Uh, the, I think it's a tentacle probably, but I'm, yes. just, I'm just hoping that that's, what the, the octopus has latched onto him, or I, I should say, he's latched onto the octopus. <laughs> I'm almost thumbs today. Cranky green giant. Yes, he's not the jolly green giant. He's the cranky green giant. Hey, you guys! 
that that was my favorite line from this movie. It was the it was, it was the captain. He is he's in it, and he's got tentacles all around him. And the best line he can come up with was, "Hey, you guys." <laughs> Is the chat split again? Well, so there he is. Yes, he's he's his name is yes, Gara. We broadcasted by the way. in two different places for this one, just because some yeah. of our fans are are on the 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 other page. So yeah, it's it is split. Just <laughs> yeah, his name is Gara in Japan. Uh, that's the creature's name. Although they just call him Green Gargantua in the American version, uh, and Sanda is the name of the other one, and they call him the Brown Gargantua. And even though he's not really brown, he's kind of you know sandy colored. Um, and here's the thing. Okay. Um, I read somewhere that this was actually supposed to be a continuation of Frankenstein conquers the world, which had, uh, uh Nick Adams in it. Um, and, uh, it was th the brown gargantua was supposed to be Frankenstein and the green gargantua was supposed to be an offshoot of him. His hand, you know, got cut off and it fell into the sea and it became Boom, the, the green gargantua. That's the way it was supposed to be. But then again, everything changed and they decided, you know what, let's go with the gargantua thing. And that's what they did. So here he is tipping the boat over and we get the uh, <laughs> tentacles. Yeah. Uh, and we get the, uh, the the war of the gargantuas, the, the opening credits. That runs. And, and General, um, I wanted to know, was 1970 a good year for you? What was the General doing in 1970? Uh, probably watching this movie. <laughs> that would be my guess. Um, can we go back a slide? I just want to say something. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to do that. <laughs> so, and here we have Rust Hamlet. Hey, that's Riff from West Side Story. When you're a jet, you're the hot cat in town. You're the heavyweight kid with the gold medal crown. How did he end up in this? He's Dr. Paul Stewart. That's how. And he's at the Kyoto Institute for Big Monsters. Ha ha. He must be a friend of ours. And uh, he is in, he is about to investigate uh, the capsized boat incident. Wait a minute. That's uh, Kumi Mizuno beside him, isn't it? Oh, there's a boat. <laughs> Okay, so, okay, I'll move forward then. <laughs> um, they go and they check out the, uh, the, the, the the wreckage. The boat has been sunk, and they find some chewed up uh, clothes on the railing. But that's it. No, nope, no, no monster here. No giant monster here. The captain in Yokosuka Hospital is in, uh, he's pretty traumatized, but he tells them the story of a green monster sinking his ship um <laughs> yeah okay okay right um so the police find the clothes of the other 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 five okay here's the thing they say that it was a crew of five in this movie but there's five guys they find their clothes or actually four guys they find their clothes between the, sh the shore this is a math problem all of a sudden uh, they find their chewed up clothes between the shore and the boat. Okay. Plus the captain who didn't come ashore naked. All right. <laughs> he had his clothes on. So that's five clothes, sets of clothes. And then they found the clothes on the railing. That's six. So they must've had a stowaway. That's all I'm saying. What about that? Correcting the nerds. <laughs> what was that, Greg? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Other, other than that, the only other thing I can think of is the captain showed up on the shore naked. The creature got his clothes, but he, he slipped out of his clothes and didn't get eaten. Um, so that's the uh, the police department there going, oh, look at all the, look at all these chewed up clothes. Isn't that weird? Um, back in Kyoto, <laughs> there they are. Reporter, at, The reporters asked Dr. Stewart about his gargantua that escaped a few years back. Uh, and again, there's Kumi Mizuno over to the right. Um, she's been in a lot of these training films. Uh, and she plays his uh, his assistant, Kyoko, I think is her name. Uh, meanwhile, another fishing boat runs into uh, our green gargantua in Tokyo Bay. Oh, there's, there's a flashback of the uh, brown gargantua when he was a little baby. Yeah, but he was regular baby size. Um, but very smart. And uh, 
and again, he grew to gigantic size, and which we don't see in the flashback, and he escapes, which we don't see in the flashbacks. So, uh, but there's the other boat, the other fishing boat. They run into the Green Gargantua. Now, this guy looks over the, the back of the boat, and how'd you like to see this in the water? Looking up at you. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. That's a that's that's a that's a soiled pair of pants right there. If you look down in the water and see that looking up at you, so these two guys end up being uh, green food, green gargantua chow, and uh, and the fishermen, uh, they're trying to haul something in at the same shore, and the gargantua shows up, and boom! Hey, everybody knows now about the gargantua. It confirms uh, that the gargantua is real. So, uh, again, this was at uh, the Mira Peninsula. And uh, Dr. Majida finds slimy green fur uh, on the boat of the two guys that were, that were tipped out. But it must be, uh, must be Yokosuka because uh, there's the cop over his shoulder from the same, same area. So the green garden intro must be hanging out in Yokosuka. That's my guess. Um, in the mountains, Dr. Stewart decides he and uh, Kyoko are going to go up to the mountains, or I'm sorry, Akemi, Akemi is, his, uh, is her name, um, and they see the giant footprints that have been uh, made there. There's the giant footprints going up the mountain, and this is what, uh, what makes Hazard uh, say, hey, it's, a, it's an abominable snowman. Because uh, those definitely look like abominable snowman feet. Foot Absolutely. Feet I mean, you know, te textbook, General. It's actually textbook. That's exactly what they look like because they don't wear shoes because they don't make them in, in abominable snowman sizes. I mean, it's got to be at least like a size 37 or something. That's even well, what's bigger amazing. than Shaq. What's amazing is that uh, these, have been, these footprints have been there for several days and the snow hasn't covered them in uh, at all. <laughs> so. Because there, there's a magical element to some of these abominable snowmen. But I guess they're pretty like, deep. Yes. And they're also you know, very deep. There's scientific reasons, you know. I R I K R. I know, right? It means I know, I know. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Now I'm with you. I, I hate it when people do that, when they just shorten it to shorten a whole word to a letter and they expect you to decode it instantly. Acronym. And I go, young people can do it, but I can't. You know who does it? Who does it is Jonathan Phipps. And then, yes, I and know. Then, and, and Dennis Tordon did it to me today, and I, I had no idea what he's even talking about. He also likes the acronym. There are people who like acronyms, and I don't. I don't understand them, you know. Oh, we do want to say uh, Cadet Hicks is here, so we want to give a shout-out. He's one of our top cadets. He's always present, so we'll, we'll salute you, Clayton. Salute. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you for being here, Clayton. Thank you. We're talking about gargantuas. So get out your toilet paper, because if you meet a, a, a green gargantua, <laughs> you're going to pee yourself. Uh, exactly. So there's there's exactly. Dr. Stewart wearing his very thin coat with elbow pads uh, up in the Himalayan mountains. <laughs> no oxygen, <laughs> no parka. You know, she's wearing a nice little outdoor hat for crying out loud. But they're also they're supposed to be up in the Himalayan mountains. So go figure. Um. <laughs> oh, Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. Toto University Laboratory, Biological Atomic Chemistry. I just got winded reading all that. And look at all the Japanese characters there. Why, my, my goodness. Um, so anyway, uh, this is a biological atomic chemistry lab. Uh, and uh, Professor Kita uh, confirms the disturbing truth. The samples are green hair. I don't know why that would be so disturbing, but they all are like, oh, green hair. Uh, meanwhile, at 19 minutes and 30 seconds on the overcast day at Tokyo Airport, old Gara decides to pop up for a little snack. Does anyone remember the Pan America, Pan American flights, Pan Am? There's a lot of those in this film. I'm so glad your birthday was awesome, Clayton. So glad you had a good birthday. So yes, he's, he's walking birthday. across the airport there. Definitely. Happy birthday, Clayton. Happy belated birthday. Yes. I was, I was, anyway, <laughs> I, I, I digress. <laughs> I do. You remember Pan Am? Yeah. They went out of business shortly after this movie was made. Uh, too many gargantuas, I guess, causing the flights to be, you know, sent away. Uh, so there he is walking across the, uh, at the airport. Um, 
I have a note here. He surely looks confused by it, but I don't know what what that what is, that is in regards to. Maybe the next slide will tell us. Okay, he surely looks confused by it. Uh, not not sure what that means. Anyway, old Gara there is uh, it's like a kid in a candy shop. Look at all that food running around. Yeah, I got a whole airport full of people. To, to munch down on. Uh, now, I just want to say uh, about this shot, uh, the people running, this is the next shot, actually, the people that are running away. Uh, Gara looks very short here, <laughs> doesn't he? He looks like a little mini-me version of Gargantua. I mean, look how short he is there. He's just peeping his little head, uh, unless, he, unless he went down on his belly, you know. <laughs> See how short he is? He's a little midget, Gargantua. <laughs> what I'm saying is they did a bad job on the mat here. We're folks. supposed to call it little, little people, little Gargantua, instead of midget. So just need to. Oh, sorry. You know, okay. He looks, like, he looks like a little yeah. person, Gargantua. A little person, Gargantua. A big little person, Gargantua. A very big version, yes. Thanks for correcting me on that. I'm cancel cultured again. Of course, because, you know, that's the scientific, you know, and I'm a scientist and I have very valid degrees and I do have a lab coat. So I just always have to. <laughs> which which is always good. It's I'm a very valid scientist. So. <laughs> so you say. <laughs> and so I know. Um, Don't the, forget the, it. <laughs> the, uh, the poor little old lady here, you know, good clean, cleaning ladies are hard to find. Um, this monster is thick. There she is. Um, just such a waste. You know, she got, she's, she's going to get chewed up. Um, when I first saw this next scene where he's actually eating the, the cleaning lady, um, this little old bitty, <laughs> um, and nothing to wash her down with, no peach tea or anything. Uh, let me say it freaked me out. I had nightmares for weeks. He eats people. And then he spits out the clothes, picky little bastard. He spits her clothes right out. See that? Pooey! Right out onto the onto the pavement there. Uh, then the sun comes out and it drives him back into the ocean. Only one dead and uh, thousands injured by panic. So, got to be careful. Look at that face, will you? Gee. There he goes, running back to the ocean. Yeah, yeah, go run to your mama. Afraid of, he, he's not used to sunlight. He's not used to lights. That's the problem. So he was able to come out because it was an overcast day. But sun came out, boom, back into the drink. What can you not argue with, Fred Bowman? <laughs> That's an ugly face. Okay, so now at 24 minutes, we, uh, we meet the general who's brought in to tackle the gargantuan problem. Um, he intends to run a, a giant electrical current into Tokyo Bay. Electrocute it. Mm. So that's just enough time uh, for a musical number <laughs> from the producer's wife, Kip Hamilton, who, by the way, gets second billing uh, in the opening credits for this. Um, something I did not know until I watched this this week. I, I didn't realize that Kip Hamilton here... Got second billing after Russ Hamlin, um, where she's only in this for one scene. Um, but by the time she gets through that, the words get stuck in my throat. The words get stuck in my throat. That's the song that she sings. We are actually begging for Garrett to eat her. <laughs> please, please, chow down. Uh, genius, genius casting, though, because uh, I think we've all seen pretty bad singers like this on foreign cruise ships. I, I, I do. So anyway, they turn on the lights and Gera drops her back onto the deck. Multiple contusions, but she'll be she'll be OK to sing again uh, another day, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, for the record, I like the Devo version of the song. Uh, the words get stuck in my throat much better. Just saying. Yes, they did a cover of that. So uh, 30 minutes, 40 seconds, uh, Gara comes ashore again, and the military move into action. Finally, uh, we get your standard fare, toy tanks, toy rocket launchers. Yes, and uh, 
the new bad boy in town, the T O O O eight mobile maser cannons. Oh yeah. I just got a chubby. Love those bad boys. Uh, 31.45. That's the best thing about this movie, by the way, is these maser cannons. Oh my God. Are they sweet? Um, 31.45, uh, sure enough, Gara hits the villages looking for some, looking for a pork dinner. There he comes. Uh, 33.10, now the villagers have set fire to repel Gara, but his eyes have adjusted. He's thinking barbecue. You know it. Uh, 34 minutes, lights, masers, action. <laughs> so how'd you like to turn the lights on on this hairy green monster? Um... The military continues to move in and set up 35 minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, but the green hairy devil, he means business. Yeah, he's on He's on the move. Um, 3620, they decide to open fire on him. Uh, one guy says, hey, open fire. And they do. Uh, and he takes some tanks and uh, picks them up and throws them into the local houses. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Um Again, the army continues to set up their trap for him. Um, and we are reminded that Gera is an aquatic creature. He needs water. 42-40. But they're booby-trapping the lakes. He 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 he. Love it. Uh, they try and show him, slow him down with helicopters. Hmm. Who's slowing who down here? Forty-six ten. They hit him with the lasers. Ouch. 4620, they hit him with the masers. Ouch, ouch. Owie. There they are. Those masers in action. They can cut down some trees, too, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. This scene, actually, where they're cutting down the trees as, as he's running behind the trees, or he's actually crawling behind the trees, uh, is reused in a few films, including Godzilla vs. Megalon later. Uh, it's a pretty impressive scene. Um... Again, these major cannons are awesome. I'm hoping that uh, I get one for Christmas. Uh, 48.30. Remember, the lakes are electrified. Sweet. He's going down. So, yeah, aim for the brain. Let's bake that noggin. Bake it, baby. Um, 49.20. Everything stops as another larger brown gargantua pulls the plug and saves the green one. This one is named Sanda, and he's got a big heart. And he has, has a really sad, somber music and buck teeth. Uh, again, this is supposed to be Frankenstein, all furry it now. But uh, but anyway, I didn't want to didn't want to hurt anybody. Oh yeah, that's a buck teeth. Ah uh, hey, uh, he looks like uh, Jerry Lewis there. I didn't want to hurt anybody. And I'm going to take my green brother away. Ah, ah, ah. Hey, lady. <laughs> Why is this guy so obsessed with laser cannons? Oh, man. We love him. We love him. Did you just say I got a chubby? Yes, I did. It's gone away now, but because you just said something about it. But there it is. So uh, Sanda saves him. They walk off into... Um, they walk off into the woods. We almost had that green bastard. And oh, here he comes. So, 5045. Uh, our science team proved that there are two gargantuas. <laughs> Actually, they didn't prove it. Just another gargantua showed up and boom, hey, hey, there's two. Uh, so now they need to figure out how to save the brown one, the nice one. And there's Russ Tamlin again, Officer Krupke. We're really upset. We never had the love that every child ought to get. That's how they do it. <laughs> they sing that to the general. Deep down inside him, he is good. The gargantuan's good. The brown one's good. Yes, he's good. <laughs> I can see it. Um, so, 53 minutes to two guard shirt. Gar 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 Peachy. The two gargantuas hide in the woods while the scientists and the military poke around. Um, you would think it would be easy to play hide-and-seek with these two. But uh, they're pretty good, actually. They're pretty good. <laughs> He's taking the high road. 
Um, 43.30, Akemi and Dr. Stewart find another cell sample from the green one. Um, the cells are identical. The green one is the clone of the other. That's what they found out. Thank you, M.M., for, for joining us for a while. Uh, the green one decides uh, when it gets misty, he's going to go out. Gara is going to go and get a snack. He's going to get something to eat. Uh, well, blah, blah, blah. One hour, one minute, and ten seconds, Akemi falls over a cliff trying to get away from the green gargantua, and the brown gargantua, Santa, saves her, but a big rock injures his left leg. Falls right on it. So he has to limp off there. Uh, after the green one goes back to the ocean for a bit, oh, yeah, 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 ha, blah, 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 ha, sorry. Santa comes back and finds out that Gara has been eating people, silent green is people. Uh, he grabs a switch and beats the tar out of the greenie. Yeah, chases him all the way to Tokyo. <laughs> well, actually, actually, that's after the green one runs all the way to the ocean for a bit, and then he comes back to Tokyo, and then they kind of meet up. But anyway, you know what I mean. Uh, remember, he just got an ass whipping. Well, he's going to get an ass whipping. Next slide. <laughs> so again, he runs off to the ocean. Even though the green one's got a broken leg, or I, I'm thinking it's sprained, because he can still walk on it. They're saying broken leg, but I'm thinking it's sprained. <laughs> Russ Tamlin, slept walked through this movie. Um, there were stories that, uh, that Mr. Tamlin, who, who is a method actor, um, didn't have the same ideas uh, that the director had for his performance in this. And he kind of improvised some stuff. Uh, I, I don't. I don't find fault with his performance. I think he he does all right. He's uh, he does an adequate job, but I'm sure that being in Japan was a lot funner, a lot more fun than, than probably doing the Doctor Stewart in this movie. Um, so in any case, they uh, they go looking for the brown gargantua because all the lights and stuff are coming on in the city in Tokyo, and uh, uh, the green one comes, <laughs> but then the brown one comes and saves Akemi just before she gets eaten by the green one. Um, and he doesn't look happy. He keeps waving his fist out there. Uh, the, the green one's like, ah, it's the guy that beat me with a tree. Uh, zombies? What? Oh, you guys are having a conversation with yourself now. <laughs> so anyway, we have the, a huge fight um, that lasts, you know, close to 15 minutes here. A huge kaiju fight. That's why a lot of the fans really like this film. Is the kaiju fight at the end is pretty lengthy, uh, and it includes uh, military attacks as well. Uh, the green one likes to bite. Just a just a note there. Uh, but again, he keeps moving away, and the brown one keeps moving towards him with his hand out, like Frankenstein, actually. Uh, and then the mazers arrive. Yay! I love them. And uh, they focus mostly on the green one, which I like. Uh, and then the the the, the the fight moves out to the ocean. They fall in the ocean. They each pick up the boat. <laughs> you know, uh, snippets of Rodan's uh, theme song and King Ghidorah's theme song are played throughout this uh, this fight. And then a volcano erupts, conveniently. And uh, both die. <laughs> and, uh, and Akemi looks sad. So there's the volcano, the sea volcano. There they are fighting near the sea volcano. All that hot lava, magma uh, around them. Uh, and Akemi is sad because the brown one died with his sad music, with the trumpets. Uh uh, and for the record, and I, and I actually wrote to Linda Jo Miller, and she agrees with me, uh, she probably had the same head injury from the green slime that this uh, Kimmy has here, because they bandaged her up exactly the same way. So, <laughs> I think it's the same injury. <laughs> okay. So, um, here in my hands, I have Gara the Green Gargantua. <laughs> And, uh, Santa, whoa, <laughs> the guy lost me. Santa, the brown one. So there you go. Uh, uh. 
So, uh, yeah. Here, 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 here. I don't have a mazer. I'm sorry to say. Like, like I said, I'm hoping to get one for Christmas. Um, but this is this is a, a nice little statue that you can get. Yes, magma is now my favorite howitzer noise. Magma. Uh, <laughs> that's me doing my Doctor Evil. <laughs> the hot magma. Uh, <laughs> so there's a, there's a nice little statue that you can buy. Uh, the War of the Gargantuas. And I think I got another shot of that from another angle. There you go. There, there, is, there is a poll of the green one's butt, though, which, which I find a little disconcerting. Um, <laughs> next up, we have a, uh, I think it's a DVD. Yes, the Japanese DVD for War of the Gargantuas. Um, I, I'm guessing it's not easy to find DVDs for this movie. Uh, they even have a, a DVD, which we'll show in a second, that has that, this and Rodan. There's a poster, War of the Gargantuas poster. I'm so jealous of your figure collection. Thank you. Well, you know, it's training. I have to have these, you know, available. Uh, these are actually the figures I just showed you. Uh, you can get them on uh, on YouTube. I'm not not YouTube. Uh, eBay, but they'll, they'll cost you like 150 to 200 bucks each. They're really expensive. They're really, you know, rare because uh, you got to buy. You either have to buy them from somebody who who has them in Japan, or somebody that has bought them from somebody in Japan and has them here, like me. So, and, and, and those people are not willing to let them go for less than what they paid for them, which is usually very expensive. So in any case, there they are, the two figures from Bandai. Bandai's the, the ones that make all these figures that you see back here behind me. And uh, there they are. You can make me small and make the merchandise big if you want, so they can see better. There we go. They can hear me, that's all that matters. It's a valued accessory. <laughs> if you got money to put in stuff like that. And I've actually toyed with the idea, if it, if it weren't for this show coming about, I probably would have sold all of those last year. Uh, <laughs> uh, there, there's one, uh, a different figure of Gera holding the boat, and there's the octopus. You can see the octopus uh, by his feet there. Um, so, yeah, you can buy that one, too. I think that's a Billiken. Billiken is the name of the country, com company. Uh, that makes that one, and it's uh, it's not as scary in the face as the others. And this is actually a uh, a model kit, a resin model kit that you can buy at conventions. I never played with toys growing up, <laughs> but a lot of guys do. Again, a lot of guys go to these conventions. Uh, oh, there's the DVD I was telling you about, the Rodan. Uh, it's very hard to find a good copy of Rodan, by the way. Um, and this is the Rodan uh, Gargantua DVD set. These are selling for, get this, are you ready for this? Minimum $80 on eBay. A lot of them are marked up to like $150. Yeah. So that's how rare it is to find these. So um, and that's the back of the box for the DVD. One picture of Rodan, two pictures from War of the Gargantuas. And a Mazer cannon, but don't be fooled. It's it's not the size. It's it's like the size of a Hot Wheel. It's really small, <laughs> from what I'm told. Uh, a lot of a lot of fans when they get it, they're like, "Oh man, that's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be." Uh, there's a foreign poster. Yeah, there's a foreign poster of the Gargantuas fighting over the uh, the city. The octopus on the green one. They <laughs> obviously in this version, the octopus stays on the green one's shoulder for the entire film, and he, he kind of drags it along, <laughs> throws it at the brown one when he needs to, that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> they had to show the octopus, uh, and this is another. For, this is a Thai from Thailand, uh, a quad poster they call it. So, yeah, so there it is. And it's got all of it's got Russ Tamlin on it and Kumi Mizuno and Kenji Sara. Um, so yeah. This is a Russ Tamlin film. And he was brought in to replace Nick Adams. They decided to replace Nick Adams, uh, who uh, you know, went on to commit suicide, unfortunately. And um uh Russ Tamlin uh again had his own ideas about how to do his performance, and I don't think that went over well with the director. 
Um, and so as a result, uh, for the late 1960s and the 70s, uh, they just didn't bring in uh, American actors to join the Japanese actors for these movies anymore, with the exception of The Green Slime, which was another company that was in Toho. So um, there it is, War of the Gargantuas. And uh, again, it's, it's, it's a fan favorite, despite the fact that a lot of people uh, seem to think that uh, Tamlin's performance isn't up to spec. Uh, it is a fan favorite because uh, they, so they love Get Sanda and Gera, uh, especially Gera. He is just a gnarly kaiju. I mean, he eats people, you know, which we, we hadn't seen in films before. You know, you always thought, hey, you know, Godzilla and Rodan and all of do they eat people? <laughs> but they never really showed it. They not only showed Gera doing it, they showed him spitting out their clothes, which was like, you know, like when a dog takes a poop and then he scrapes his back legs towards it afterwards. You're like, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. There you go. Eh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, they really, really showed it. Yeah, he eats people. He eats any kind of people. Old old cleaning ladies, whatever. Guys that are, like, smuggling on a ship. Yeah, he'll eat them. Uh, and there it is. So, you know, a lot of kids that watch these movies were traumatized because, you know, they'd never shown that before. Uh, what's really weird is some of the Gamera movies got pretty violent. Uh, like I think Virus, they lopped off aliens' heads, and uh, and Guiron uh, chopped chopped monsters into several different pieces. I mean, it's not that kids; these are kids' movies. They're for kids' movies. They're pretty violent, but it's all monster violence, so they got away with it. So, Hazard, are you there? Yes, General. I learned a lot from this training film, but what would you say is our main takeaway? I mean, is this something we need to be looking out for in America right now? Well, I'll tell you, uh, the main takeaway from this film is if you zap or, or use military armaments against these kind of creatures, these gargantuas, their cells can split off and create another gargantua. That's so, amazing. That's absolutely so they, amazing. they died the appropriate way. They died by fire, you know, volcano eruption, and they got, you know, buried in lava, hot lava under the water, you know, and, uh, you know, otherwise, you know, there could have been gargantuas all over the darn place. So, you know, you got to be careful when you're shooting rockets and missiles and stuff at monsters like this, because their cells might turn into other monsters. You know, I hate to go back to the green slime again, but there you go. Now, you kept seeing the brown one and the green one. I mean, did they have actual names or are they really just like the brown and the green one? Is just In the American version, they just call them the green gargantua and the brown gargantua. But I know for a fact from this training film that the name, the names, the Japanese names for these monsters are Gera and Sanda. They like to name their monsters. They like to name their kaiju. That's what so, I thought. That's a little. That's more simple to understand it that way. That's yeah true. So in the in the Japanese version, they dubbed Russ Tramlin's lines, <laughs> you know, as they did with Nick Adams, and again, everybody's saying Gera and Sanda throughout the entire movie. Mm -hmm. But in the American version, they're going, oh, let's just call them Green Gargantua and Brown Gargantua. So. Uh, Cadet Gannon, uh, um, his main takeaway was that I do have a lab coat, so you shouldn't, you know, like second guess. So you're guess not me. to and be trifled that, with. That is definitely the proper thing. If you see a lab coat and someone has a degree, because I have real degrees, as I always try to say, you know, I have real degrees. Yes, and you do. You, just, you know, take me seriously. You know, that's the thing. Thank Very you. Serious. Thank you, Cadet Gannon, and you do get a salute from me for that. That is an absolute wonderful takeaway here. Uh, I also want to say that we do have on Cosmos Television, coming up right after this in a few minutes, we're going to have No Icing, and that is mm -hmm. with Sandy D. And she's going to have, you know, she always has a wonderful time. And I think that Jelly Cake Making is going to actually be there. That's what I heard. I heard. I heard. Well, that would be nice. Yeah, so everyone's going to want to tune in there. And then also our friend Rory Penland, who is a host at uh, It's Casual. Uh, it's mm -hmm. Casual is having a, a wonderful July already. We had They had, they had Eddie Brill on mm -hmm. uh, next week. We yes, got, they did. They did. <laughs> next week we got, uh, they got Billy Vera, correct? Yes, they do. And I also want to say that we're, that for next month, everyone who's a big Rory Penland fan, the man of a thousand voices, he's doing something very special, which is that he's setting a world record. And I know yes. he's a personal friend of yours, General, if you want to talk about that and invite people to come on his behalf. Um, he told me it was going to be August 20th at 9 p.m. 
Um, it will be on Cosmos TV, and uh, he will be doing 800-plus voices. He's going to do at least 800 voices, he says, in an hour. He's going to try to do as many voices as he can in an hour. And by voices, that means uh, he, he does kaiju uh, sounds as well. He does animal noises. You know, that, that counts as a voice. <laughs> you know, it's something different. It, it's, it's vocal. It comes out of something. So he counts that as a voice. So uh, you never know what you're going to hear. So it's, it's very entertaining. I saw the 601 one that he did which he did in about yeah. 45 minutes. And it was very, very entertaining. And no, nobody else is doing it. And it's Guinness Book of World Records. So it's like a real thing, you know, and they're going to be- He's registered with the Guinness Book of World Records and registered. he's going to set, he's not going to, to pass a record. He's not going to beat a record. He's, he's going to set the record. He's it's the first time anybody's done it. He's setting the bar for the whole, the whole world. So Correct. It, it, it's if somebody really comes like, along and does a thousand voices in, you know, in, in, in an hour, they'll beat him. You know, but uh, let's see what happened. <laughs> I haven't heard of any heard of anybody doing anything even remotely. I mean, what is like the closest somebody can come? I mean, it's like, you know, like one third of it or something. <laughs> well, the only Guinness record uh, that's been done uh, of that nature is uh, they did 32 voices in one minute. In one minute. So, but this is an hour. He's going to do as many voices as he can in an hour. And, and he can do anything. So, I mean, people can even add things. I mean, I've heard people, you know, telling him new stuff and he can do new stuff all the time. He can basically imitate anybody. He can imitate a lot. That's for sure. He's got a, he's got a knack for it. So I do a few, but you know, he does, he does a lot. You do a very, uh, you did one last week that surprised me. I, I can't remember what it was, but you did a very convincing one. It might've been, um, was it Sean We're, Connery? Maybe something like, I don't know. Well, Every we, now and then, the general. We, we, we were doing Return of the Living Dead last week. Yes. So, so maybe maybe it was Tar Man. Brains. Brains. It might have been Tar Man. Been Man. Yes. <laughs> so, we um, went to, somebody's talking about the green slime at Nickelodeon. Yeah, they got green slime at Nickelodeon. That's a different kind of green slime. That's the good kind. I think you can eat it. <laughs> I think so, too. I think it's food grade. <laughs> but yeah, the green slime up, up and up in outer space. Yeah. Not good. Don't bring it on your ship. Wipe your feet off before you come in the ship. That's right. And, uh, you know, uh, Julie is reminding everybody that Rory Penland also paints and he has a show yes. painting with Rory. Uh, Julie is a fan of Rory's. I see her in his shows all the time. She says he's a very, uh, multi-talented man. A very multi-talented man because he's also going to be doing Celebrity Spotlight this Monday. A man of many Eastern. talents. Man of many talents. But it's man of many talents. Spot. And I'm sure he appreciates that. He does. I'll but I just, that. On Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, he's going to be doing another installment of Celebrity Spotlight. So celebrity Spotlight. To tune in to that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's casual next week is Billy Vera. Um, the week after that, I believe it's going to be uh, actress Andrea Powell from the Twilight. She was in the last Twilight movie. She was the mother in Ender's Game. She's been in a lot of movies. Uh, starting way back, like M Super Mario Brothers was one of her early, er early ones. She was one of the princesses in that. Um, and then after that, uh, Norm Lewis, the Broadway, the sensational singer from Broadway, is going to be on the show for the 26th of July. Um, he's, play he's the first black actor to play the, fa the Phantom of the Opera in Andrew Lloyd Webber's Phantom of the Opera. Um, and uh, he's one of Andrew Lloyd Webber's favorites, from what I'm told. And uh, and he was also King Triton in the Broadway version of uh, Little Mermaid. And uh, he's just, he's done a lot. He was, he's, he's been a lot. And uh, he's, he's a, he's a go-to singer uh, when they, when people are looking for singers for like special events. Norm Lewis is one of the guys they call. So, uh, going to be going to have a lot of fun. I'm sure talking to him. He does a pretty good dragon Elvis. Oh, okay. Good to know. I know dragon Elvis. All right. So, um, I think we've done all the, the, the pitching that we need to do for Cosmos. I think we did a lot of, well, and also boiling it down is Tom Cheshire's show. And that is yes. every Monday at 9 p.m. So you always want to always want to make sure you catch that. That's always a really good time. If as you're well. free at and nine o'clock on a Monday, yes, do it. It's, do it it's and, definitely worth watching. He's a he's a great show host. He has a lot of fun when he does his show. Yes, and then Orchid Times. 
which is a TMN production and it's broadcast on Cosmos and that's every uh, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. There's a lot of productions. Uh, that mm -hmm. one's getting, you know, thousands and thousands of views every Wednesday. It's absolutely stunning. It's amazing. Um, so I want to encourage everyone to watch that uh, if you can. And uh, Gregory Gannon said, don't miss this casual on Tuesdays. Rory Penland is a class act and puts on a great show. Thank you, Cadet Gannon. That's absolutely true. Thank you. Thank um, you. I'm sure he appreciates uh, that. And Julio Morales says, wow, Super Mario Brothers movie was crazy. Dennis Hopper was good. Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper. I said that correctly. Very good. <laughs> and yes, Dennis, we are Hopper. Always... Dennis Hopper. Exactly. Do you know like, Doug by chance? Like, like Jimmy Doug? Hoffa. Like, yeah, Dennis exactly. Hopper. Hoffa. Hoffa. Jimmy Hoffa. Hoffa. Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> Dennis Hopper. Is is he a kind man? Is he is he a great man? He's a he's a he's a quiet man. I didn't see the general does have impressions. Then he wants blue velvet. The, the, the general does impressions, and yes, Tom Cheshire is an amazing soul, and he's, he's great. And we have to go now because uh, it, um, no icing is about to air right now, so everybody just stay yes. put and watch Sandy D. And uh, thank you, General, and thank Keep you for, an eye out for, for those being here. Big monsters. Big monsters.